Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Tim McGonigal. Montana is scaling up COVID-19 testing to prioritize vulnerable populations and perform surveillance testing in tribal and tourism communities. That's the message from Governor Steve Bullock today. He said through community surveillance testing and contact tracing, Bighorn County found 43 new cases. One of those people died. Bullock said while there is no large community spread of COVID in the state, nine other states have seen a spike in people in the hospital since Memorial Day. Many others have seen an overall rise in cases. More visitors will be coming to Montana this year. Bullock says every visitor in Montana should continue to be vigilant and practice social distancing and good hygiene. Of course, to continue this path, we all must remain committed. The virus is certainly still here with us, and we must keep learning how to live with it and to mitigate its spread. Since the onset of COVID-19, testing capacity has expanded enormously, even in Great Falls, where originally drive through testing was reserved for symptomatic patients. Now Alluvian Health's drive through COVID testing is free and accessible to anyone. The drive through COVID tests are targeted for those with no coronavirus symptoms, since those individuals could spread coronavirus unknowingly. Alluvian Health said they've had just under 2,000 people tested for coronavirus with only one positive case. They hope to increase the number of people getting tested in order to help mitigate the spread of coronavirus as travel reopens across the country. We recommend that everyone be tested for COVID-19 and continue to be tested. And that's just so that we can monitor people who may be asymptomatic. But especially as travel is opening up across the state, we know lots of people are still traveling for work. If you've been out of our county, come get tested. It takes just a couple minutes to get tested. You get results back in one to seven days, and then you continue to be tested uh, every time you go out of our county. If you'd like a free COVID test, you can go to the drive through testing center at the former Westgate Mall between the hours of 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. weekdays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on weekends, and no appointment is required. And statewide, the number of tests is nearing the 56,000 mark. Five new cases have pushed Montana's total to 565 today. One of the new cases in, is in Lewis and Clark County, where the total stands at 19, with three active cases. The uh, local case is a male in his 60s who is a is contact to one of the positive cases from last week. There's also another hospitalization tonight in Bighorn County. 61 Montana cases are active. Eight people remain hospitalized due to COVID-19. The East Helena School District has released their first tentative plans on how they can return to in-person classes this fall if COVID-19 restrictions remain in place. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian breaks down some of the details in their proposals. East Helena Public Schools Superintendent Ron Whitmoyer says leaders felt it was important to give families an idea of what a return to classrooms in the fall could look like. People have just thousands of questions. This week, they released a post on Facebook outlining the changes they're currently looking at making if Montana remains at phase two of reopening. While Whitmoyer stresses that all the plans are still tentative, they go into great detail. For elementary school students, the current idea is to create schools within schools. Right now we're under an order to try to maintain groups of less than 50. Our plan is to do exactly that. Two classes would be organized into a team. The kids in the team would share recess times, enter and leave schools together, and use the same areas of the school. Lunches would be served in classrooms instead of cafeterias. The new East Helena High School building is still set to open this fall. That will provide much more room for the district to spread out middle and high school students. At that level, the current plan is to work on something known as block scheduling. Middle and high school students would go to two longer classes each day, one before lunch and one after lunch. They would rotate classes throughout the week. Again, the goal is to limit the sharing of spaces and items. If we can eliminate that, we can stop that mixing and stop the spread of the virus. Whitmoyer says the district will be developing two other parallel plans, one for if the COVID-19 situation worsens and one for if it improves. He says they now have to work with public health leaders and with teachers to iron out the details of implementing these changes. Trust that we are putting your children first and that their health is paramount to the work we're doing and the planning that we're making. In East Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. 
And the East Helena District will also keep providing remote learning for students who are not ready to return. Whitmoyer said about 10% of their parents reported their families have health concerns that uh, mean they're not ready for in-person classes. Well, one industry that's seeing an increase in demand right now is child care. According to Grow Great Falls Economic Development, four basic problems now exist that were not present before the pandemic, including increased parental responsibility for daily child care, increased isolation for children, decreased child care options, and decreased workplace productivity for virtual workers. One child care owner we spoke with says the lack of child care facilities is nothing new to the Electric City. Um, so I feel like we've always had a really big need and it's very, it's always been really, I've never had a problem getting children. Um, we've always had a lot of children in our community that need care during the summer, during different times. What I think I feel like has happened this time is it's become more of a need because so many people have shifted plans. Family Connections has been working with Grow Great Falls Economic Development to help find solutions to the child care shortage. They found that businesses with larger facilities were willing to provide care longer with the right opportunity. And when we presented with the opportunity to serve 8 to 10 hours of care for children, they thought that would work really well for their business as well. Uh, we then discovered that providing meals for that, because they're not a traditional child care facility, that providing meals was a challenge. Great Falls Public Schools uh, food Service stepped up right away to offer meal service through their traditional summer meal program. They also tell us if you're wanting to start a child care business, now's the time to do so. It's specifically uh, for available uh, on the uh, weekend, if they're specifically available on the weekend or overnight. Well, tonight, a group of African-American pastors in Great Falls will be hosting All Things Not Black. It's a forum on the state of race in America. The event begins at 7 o'clock in the Alexander Temple Church of God in Christ. Due to social distancing requirements, the panel is asking viewers to watch the event online instead of being there in person. The forum will be live streamed on the Alexander Temple YouTube page. Local community leaders, including Mayor Bob Kelly and Cascade County Sheriff Jesse Slaughter, will also be on the panel. After the panel's discussion of several race issues in America, there will be time for viewers to submit questions for the panelists. Being community leaders and pastors ourselves, obviously African-American, but we felt that we had to say something, at least speak to the subject. Uh, meanwhile, a peaceful Black Lives Matter protest is scheduled to take place at the Montana State Capitol building on Sunday. MTN's Alexi Aguayo spoke with Helena Police and the Public Health to discuss preparations and safety guidelines for people planning to attend. According to the Facebook event posting, over 450 people plan to attend the George Floyd Black Lives Matter rally on Sunday. And the post indicates that nearly a thousand more were interested in the event. Helena Police Chief Steve Hagen said in a news release on Wednesday that the event had been permitted by the General Services Division. And HPD and partner agencies will have a police presence. We have to protect the constitutional rights of everyone um, that's involved in every incident. So to include this rally, we'll be there to make sure um, the best we can we'll protect people's safety and constitutional rights. The Lewis and Clark Public Health also want to remind everyone who plans to attend that we are still in a pandemic and urge them to follow guidelines to help prevent further spreading of the coronavirus. Uh, we fully support our community's desire and need to be heard on the subject of systemic racism. We're just asking that, that folks do it safely, um, that you remember these lessons because COVID-19 remains a significant issue in our community. Public health recommends following these guidelines. Try to maintain a six feet distance between other participants. Since it may be difficult to maintain distance, a face covering is recommended. Practice good hygiene like washing hands and avoid touching the face. The health department recommends anyone showing symptoms of the virus to not attend the protest and find an alternative way to participate. In Helena, I'm Alexi Guayo, MTM News. Well, the temperatures have been heating up. Grant is off tonight, so we've enlisted the help of a familiar face from our sister station, KPAX, in Missoula. Here's MTN's Elizabeth Copeland with our first forecast. Hey everyone, great to be forecasting back in north central and northeast Montana. We're tracking a little activity just off to our south. Some 
of those thunderstorms bubbling up right around Butte and Bozeman, but we're going to stay mostly dry tonight. Only a light shower possible across Helena, but that's just going to be a very spotty shower and waking up tomorrow still on track to be the warmest day of the week. Plenty of sunshine as that high pressure is going to stick around. I mean, first already out in the 50s already by 5 a.m. and we're in the 60s and 70s by 9 a.m. You know it's going to be a really warm day. So as we track the next few days, look at that. The average this time of year for Great Falls is 71. We're going to be 10 plus degrees above that tomorrow on Friday as we top out at 92. One of the last warmer days as we drop to the 80s on Saturday, still above average, but then big changes are in the forecast. We track a more unsettled weather pattern and when that rain and thunderstorms return coming up here shortly. Thanks, Elizabeth. We're out here grilling for a good cause. I'm Keely Van Middendorp, and I'll have more on this story after the break. Powered by the Montana Television Network. The 530 News continues on Montana's News Leader. Welcome back. The smells of summer are in the air. MTN's Keely Van Mittendorp joins us from Riverside Rail Yard Skate Park in Great Falls. And that's where one organization is grilling burgers and brats for the community. Kelly, it's a beautiful day for a barbecue. That's right, Tim. We're out here um, outside Riverside Rail Yard Skate Park, and we're out here. Uh, it's a beautiful day, like you just said, for a barbecue. I'm joined by Alliance for Youth Youth Resource Center uh, coordinator, Zach Baumgartner. You're also a volunteer here today as well. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing out here tonight. Well, this is the third week that uh, we've been doing these outreach barbecues. Um, the Youth Resource Center just started a few weeks ago, and uh, you know, with everything going on and school not being in session, um, there wasn't a rush at the door, so we decided, hey, let's go outside. Let's go do something. So uh, we did the first one of these barbecues at the center. Um, and then we kind of got hooked up with some other friends and family and supporters and volunteers and uh, decided to come to the skate park where there's a bunch of action and yeah. uh, a lot of space. So that's why we're here. That's very neat. Now, Youth Resource Center is a program under Alliance for Youth. You guys are uh, really hoping to connect with the area's homeless youth. Uh, and this is one way that you guys are really building that bridge and, and that bond with the community. Yeah, so right now, I mean, we're just trying to get the word out. Uh, what a phenomenal opportunity to have a building uh, come to us and a lot of uh, volunteers, a lot of sponsors, a lot of donors that have helped us get that building up and running so that we can offer services to, to any kid who needs any of those services, which, yeah. whether it be laundry or food or a short term, just come and be in a safe place. Um, uh, use the computers, use use the Wi-Fi, right. uh, take a shower, uh, play some video games, uh, get some tutoring, hang out um, with any one of us. So yeah, it's been a pretty cool thing for the last two weeks and a pretty good project since January. There's been a lot of work done and we've had a lot of help. Very cool. Now we are, um, we did cover that uh, building initially if you guys want to check out that story. We are out here though at the Riverside Rail Yard Park. We've got food donated by uh, businesses like Double Barrel Coffee House, Score Hill Storage, uh, and organizations like Set Free Alliance for Youth here. Um, so it's just a great community wide effort. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a skate park story without a failed attempt or two. So we brought our sports director, Tom Wiley, with us. He's actually manning the camera right now. We have a couple pillows here. We are going to have him. Uh, uh, see uh, how he does on four wheels. He's so talented on two legs. We thought, why not just throw another thing at him at the end of the week? So, uh, reporting from uh, Riverside Rail Yard Park, Keely Van Middendorp, MTN News. Back to you, Tim. All right, thanks a lot, Keely. And uh, stay tuned. Elizabeth Copeland is coming up with weather. She has a preview. Thanks. All right, what a perfect Thursday for us in central and eastern Montana. A little bit of a breeze, about 20 mile per hour gusts across the high line. 
We got a little breeze across Great Falls at 15 mile per hour gusts, but all that high pressure is keeping some of those storms just to the south of us. A few of those still bubbling up right across Dillon Butte, Bozeman area. But besides the Helena occasional light shower, we're actually going to stay very clear across the High Line and the northeast corner. Expect plenty of sunshine and even warmer weather is to come. So all because of this high pressure, that's what's keeping us very clear and dry these next few days. But we do have some changes in the forecast coming in for the weekend, which we'll break down for you shortly. But because of the clear skies and that high pressure, all the air from the south, that warmer air is moving in and all of Montana is warmer this time right now than it was 24 hours ago. So today still tracks on that warming trend and we're even going to continue warming up through tomorrow afternoon as well. And speaking of those warming trends, we're going to see a lot more of that warmer weather in the forecast. We actually started out two weeks ago, 16 degrees above average. We took a quick dip below average and then we're still on that warming trend until tomorrow. Today's results haven't come in yet, which is why it's at zero. But do expect this line to keep on going up into those reds for at least one more day before we see a little bit more of that line dip into the blues for the weekend as big changes are in store for us. So tomorrow's highs are going to be back in the 90s. A very warm one for us across the high line when we top out in those low 90s. See those darker reds there that indicates all that air from the south still funneling in. Besides a few clouds, we're still going to be hitting mostly in the 90s in north central Montana. So 91 in Great Falls, 87 in Lewistown. Glasgow at 91. Very, very warm day for us. Again, all before those changes move in. So besides a light shower right about 9 p.m. tonight, we're going to actually wake up tomorrow morning. Beautiful skies, a great sunrise for us about 6.30 a.m. A couple of clouds do trickle in just because of that air from the south is going to bring a little moisture and plus that warm, warm air. A couple of spotty showers, definitely a possibility tomorrow afternoon. So we'll see that especially right across north central Montana, the high line, northeast Montana, though, going to stay quite a bit more dry, seeing a lot more of that sunshine through the afternoon. So looking out, though, here are those changes we were talking about. Six to 10 day outlook, definitely wetter than average. And we're also going to see quite a bit more of those cooler conditions settle in all because we have those changes moving in for the weekend and those are going to hang on until we head into next week. So looking at our seven day forecast here in Great Falls again, 92 tomorrow. That's the warmest day of the week. We have a couple of spotty showers here and there, and that's only because of that extra moisture that's moving in. We have a little convection because of those warm temperatures as well. So expect a spotty shower here and there. Saturday, though, looking pretty dry. That breeze is going to start kicking up as that system moves in. And then that's when we take the big drop in temperatures. We drop back down to the 60s on Sunday with those rain showers in the forecast and then holding steady right about average through next week. But we're not done with the rain after Sunday in Helena. Saturday evening is when your first chances of showers move in. Some showers and storms move in Saturday night with that new storm. And then the unsettled weather pattern hangs on through Sunday as we drop to the 60s, holding steady with the 70s with spotty showers in the forecast through next week. Um, I don't know. I think it's worth doing. All right, uh, Scott, I, can anyone hear me back there? Thank you, Elizabeth. All right, we are at the uh, skate park here in Great Falls, and uh, we got a segment coming up called Tom Learns to Skate. Might be the only time we do it. It's not going to end well. I got my safety equipment, but we will be right back after the break. Powered by the Montana Television Network. The 530 News continues on Montana's News Leader. All right, well, uh, thank you very much. Back here at the uh, Rail Yard Skate Park here, joined by Greg. Uh, we talked about the Alliance for Youth Barbecue and some of the cool things they're doing here. But, of course, we are at the skate park, so uh, given the tradition of the past couple weeks, learned how to roller skate last week. Greg is going to try to teach me in about a minute how to do the most complex <laughs> trick I can learn in a minute uh, on a skateboard with my safety gear. So, Greg, yep. uh, can you tell me what I need to do? Okay, first thing you need to do is you need uh -huh. to know your... Your front to back balance. All right, done. Kind of like when you're rollerblading. Okay. Second, you want to make sure that your feet are in the middle of the board as far as for your toes and not hanging over too far, your heels not hanging uh -huh. over too far. From there, you're going to push the tail down, lift up with your front foot, and it's called an Ollie. An Ollie? All right. Ollie. I can do an Ollie, maybe two Ollies. We'll see. All right. Uh, <laughs> glad I have my safety sure. gear up here. Excuse me, fellas. Or wait. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Hold tight. All yeah. right. I'm on. I'm on. Ready? Ollie. No. <laughs> All right. I lost the safety gear, but I can still try another Ollie. Here we go. There you go. 
<laughs> that's that. I did it, right? Was that an ollie? Yeah, that's no. yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that was an ollie. Uh, I'm not 100% an expert, but I will be thanks to Greg uh, reporting from the Rail Yard Skate Park. Thanks, everybody. Again, you can come on down here, enjoy the barbecue. Uh, Tom Wiley, MTN News. Back to you, Tim. All right, thanks, Tom. Well, the organizers of the annual Prickly Pear Community Fireworks Celebration in East Helena say they're facing additional challenges in putting on the event this year. It's the fourth year Shelley's Country Cafe has organized the fireworks show. They say COVID-19 kept them from collecting donations for about two months. Because they're behind where they hope to be, they say this year's show may be smaller than usual. They're setting a goal of $25,000 in donations. Town Pump has committed to provide $10,000 if organizers can collect another $10,000. Organizers say with so many other summer events canceled, they're doing everything they can to make sure the fireworks go forward. And uh, they're uh, taking donations up until uh, July 1st. We'll be right back with a final check. I am. Before we go, Twitter wants to double check that you understand your own tweets. They're testing a feature with Android users right now. If you try to tweet an article link that Twitter uh, detects you haven't opened, you might see a prompt asking if you'd like to open the link before posting. Twitter says this is part of their ongoing efforts to crack down on misinformation. They also say the prompt might help spark more informed discussions by making sure the poster is fully aware of its content. Very important to make sure whatever you're sending out for the whole world to see is authentic. Well, that's all the time we have. We'll see you back here tonight at 10.